Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Poncho, back at you again with another video. And there's been a massive update in regards to the killing of seven-year-old schoolgirl Emily Jones. Now, if you guys have been subscribed to my channel for a little while, then you'll know that all the way back in March of this year, I covered a story which still today, when people ask me what's the most shocking story I've ever covered, I always refer back to this one. But in regards to an update, there has currently been an ongoing trial that I've been keeping my eye on, and the person who actually went on to kill Emily has recently been cleared of a murder, but we'll break the trial coverage down after a brief summary for you guys who don't know what's going on. So basically on the 22nd of March 2020, which would be Mother's Day here in the UK, seven year old schoolgirl Emily Jones had been playing in Queen's Park in Bolton, when out of nowhere a woman by the name of Eltiona Skana launched a vicious attack as Emily rode by the bench she was sitting on. Eltiona would go on to stab Emily in the neck and unfortunately Emily would go on to die from her injuries. Eltiona was known to have mental health conditions and she was detained under the Mental Health Act. Before the trial was to go ahead, she denied murder but went on to plead guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility and so a trial began on the 26th of November 2020 and of course what I've just explained to you was told to the court in regards to the events of what exactly happened but talking of these events in more detail, prosecutor Michael Brady QC said Eltiona was sitting on a bench in the park alone carrying a craft knife which she had bought earlier that day, the day Emily died. Emily was riding a scooter through the area with her father, Mark Jones. The prosecution continued, the pair went to meet Emily's mother. When the child spotted her mum along the path, she asked if she could ride ahead and greet her. Those words exactly would have been, Daddy, Daddy, I want to go to mum. Emily's path towards her mum took her past the defendant who, as Emily scooted by, grabbed her and in one moment slit her throat with the craft knife and then threw her to the ground. There'd been no interaction between Emily and the defendant. The wound was unsurvivable and Emily died shortly thereafter. Having pushed Emily to the ground, the defendant ran away. Although nobody saw her place the blade she used to kill Emily in the backpack she had with her, the defendant must have done for it was later recovered from her backpack. The prosecution argues that Eltiona's actions should be classed as murder, even though she suffered from severe mental health problems, including paranoid schizophrenia. But the defense would go on to argue she should be instead found guilty of manslaughter as a result of diminished responsibility due to her mental state. In court, it was heard that Emily's parents were no longer together, but remained on good terms. In a statement from Emily's father, he would go on to say that he would regularly take care of Emily on Sundays. That particular day, they had arranged to meet Emily's mother in the afternoon at Queen's Park where she was planning on going for a run. Emily was wearing a navy coat with spots. She saw her mother further down one of the paths in the park and asked if she could go ahead and meet her like we've already explained. Emily's father, from his standpoint, would go on to say that he initially thought that his daughter had fallen from a scooter in front of the bench where Eltiona was sat. But it was only when another walker shouted out that he understood something terrible had happened. The jury was told that he ran to Emily's side and saw that she was bleeding from her neck and at this point he immediately bent down and cradled her in his arms. He would go on to say he then shouted for help and he described Emily's state at that point as she wasn't moving and she said nothing but he himself was frantic. The court was then told that in the following minutes, people tried to help Emily with one man offering his shirt to stem the bleeding, while a woman who Emily's father believed was a trained nurse administered CPR. Despite the best efforts of the people on the ground and paramedics, when she was rushed to Salford Royal Hospital, she would unfortunately go on to be pronounced dead. Emily's father said, I can't explain it, I don't know why this happened. She was riding on her scooter to meet her mum and wasn't causing any problems. The court was then told that Eltiona tried to run from the scene, but she was chased down by a man known as Tony Canty, who had been passing the scene with his wife. He caught her and dragged her to the floor before positioning himself on top of her so she couldn't escape. The court was told of Tony's account, where he said that Eltiona was rambling and rambling, with her even suggesting that Emily tried to kill her family. Eltiona would go on to say in Tony's words, she tried to kill me, she tried to kill my family, and also mentioned the home office and said, I'm a girl, I'm a child. The court was shown evidence of a police interview with Tony's wife, Lindsay, and she said that she didn't see what happened between Emily and Eltiona, but she does recount seeing her flee from the scene. She said she looked agitated and she said, 
said she was trying to kill me as if she was explaining to us what she was doing. She continued, I went down to the scene, I was holding my daughter with one arm and pushing the pram with the other, basically I couldn't do much. I could see people around, the girl was on the floor and there was lots of blood on the path and on the girl. The man who I took her to be her dad in regards to Emily Jones' dad had his arms around her and was sat on the floor behind her. Matthew Hopper, one of the paramedics who rushed to the scene to try and save Emily's life, would go on to describe getting called out to the incident and of course trying to save her. He said the first thing that he noticed was the patient's legs were flat but her body was upright and a male, her father, was sitting behind her holding her like we've previously spoken about on the other account. He went on to say, the patient was very pale in the face, she was unconscious through cardiac arrest and she had suffered catastrophic hemorrhaging. The jury also heard of Dr. Scott Beatty who treated Emily when she was rushed into the hospital. He said that efforts were made to the fullest extent in regards to when she got rushed in, but despite best efforts, she was pronounced dead at around 3.56pm. So Eltiona would eventually go on to be arrested thanks to Tony for apprehending her and she would then go on to be assessed by a number of mental health experts, which included Dr. Victoria Sullivan, a consultant psychiatrist at the Edenfield Centre in Presswich. She told jurors that she spoke to Eltiona on the 23rd of March, following her arrival at the centre. She said that Eltiona told her she had been suffering from paranoid delusional beliefs and had spoken about having visions of people. She described Eltiona as smirking and smiling and responding to unseen stimuli while she was trying to assess her and during her entire stay at the centre. Dr Sullivan said that other staff reported seeing Eltiona hitting out and muttering. She said a junior doctor told her that Eltiona said that she had seen angels. She would go on to say she seen angels talk to her, she could see them and at times they would make gestures at her. Dr Sullivan told the jury that Eltiona's sister had turned up at the unit quote unquote distressed. The doctor would go on to say that her sister told them that she'd been missing days in her medication, adding she had mental health difficulties for a number of years and at times she wouldn't take her medication and had been a risk to other people. Going into more detail about her past, the court was told that Eltiona had originally come from Albania in 2014 and she'd been having injections of antipsychotic drugs each month since 2017. Eltiona would go on to tell doctors that this medication had caused her mental health to deteriorate. She would go on to tell Dr Sullivan that in mid-2019 she had swapped to a different antipsychotic medication taken or really which she said made her feel less paranoid. The court was also told that she lived in a flat in Bolton with her mother, two sisters, and her brother lived close by in Manchester. The court was also told that she had no job, no friends, and spent her time having coffee with her mother. Again, going over her history, it's believed that Eltiona had previously been sectioned in 2015 after wielding a weapon against her neighbours, and again in 2017 after hitting her own mother with an iron and an ironing board, and this left her with a two-inch cut to her hand. The reason that she attacked her mother was because her mother actually found her trying to self-harm and tried to stop her but Eltiona would go on to attack her. Either way though her mother would take her upstairs and, and her mother had to chain the door shut. To this she began to shout that she wanted to kill her mother and then everything would be okay. On other occasions she removed light bulbs from the house, threw away a TV and disconnected the boiler as she was concerned about the effect electricity could have on her. While in hospital before the trial a lot of things things were happening which would show that Eltiona was suffering from mental health issues. One example was that she was watching a children's program and she began laughing uncontrollably when she seen a child that actually looked like Emily. She would also go on to tell staff that she was a paranoid schizophrenic and would go on to say things like, it's been three months, what do you want me to do? Cry all the time in regards to the murder of Emily Jones. She also told a nurse that the murder was premeditated and that she waited in the park and picked the victim, adding, I did what I did, then I tried to run away. Although she admitted it was premeditated, psychiatric experts claim that this wasn't the case and it could have been anyone who crossed a path that day. Which would lead us up to the most recent day of the trial which would be today the 4th of December 2020 and the prosecution have actually announced that they'd be dropping the murder charges and are gonna stick with a guilty plea which would be manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Prosecutor Michael Brady QC told the jury that the Crown Prosecution Service would no longer pursue a murder charge and asked them to find Eltiona not guilty of that offence. Speaking to the 
the jury, he said the prosecution has decided that there was no longer any realistic prospect of conviction for murder. He said this is not a decision that has been taken lightly by the Crown, adding it's a decision taken with care and mindful of the sensitivity of the case. He explained the decision to drop the charge had come following evidence from Dr. Sofani Saeed Afghan, a consultant forensic psychiatrist who had been treating Eltiona at Rampton Hospital. And this was the evidence in regards to things such as her laughing at the TV when she seen the child who looked like Emily Jones, and another key one was that she became aggressive towards staff and stared into one member of staff's face saying, your body has gone to the soul. Of course, if you read through the trial transcripts, you'll see a list of other things, but I've just mentioned a couple for context of the video. The prosecution would also go on to tell the court that he had no alternative explanation for Eltiona's actions on that day, aside from previously explanations of psychosis brought on her by diagnosed paranoid schizophrenia. The jury then found Eltiona not guilty of murder, and of course, she will be getting sentenced, I believe, next week. So of course the most recent news did come out today and it has been faced with a lot of backlash online. Now of course this is due to how horrific this incident actually was but I just do want to say that it does take a lot for the prosecution especially already on trial to go ahead and drop the charges so of course there must have been a lot of evidence to suggest that she was mentally ill because of course they wouldn't have just dropped it for no reason. Now of course that doesn't take away from the fact that how shocking and horrific this incident actually was. Emily Jones was only seven years old and had a whole life ahead of her and her life was just taken away in the blink of an eye and I am hoping that next week some justice does actually get served for the family and friends of Emily Jones and I just do want to take this time out as well just to say rest in peace to Emily and my condolences do go out to those family and friends who have been affected by her death. But let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below. Give the video a little like. And if you want the latest drill, street and music news out of the UK, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy Pancho, and I'm out.